Hello, my wonderful friends. Welcome back to r slash I do work here, lady, where people who actually work places are mistaken as not. And the stories are super entertaining. Guys, in today's episode, you're going to hear four stories. The first, OP is a photographer who's mistaken for a creep. Yikes. The second story, a security guard mistakenly yells at a man who owns a multi-million dollar law firm. The third, OP's off duty from her job and encounters a Karen and will finish up with a story about people claiming that they know the owner when they really don't. I hope you guys stay for the tales today and do hit that subscribe button for future stories. Let's get into it. This story is titled, I'm a photographer, not a horny teen. This happened to me a while ago at a volleyball training school that I work at part time. My dad co-owns the place with four other people, two of which are ex-pro volleyball players from Russia. At the school, we have different colored shirts for the students based on age range. Green, blue, white, and a black shirt for staff. All of these have a giant logo of the school plastered on the front of it. Since I play soccer and have school to focus on, I only work there part-time. When I'm there, I do things like update rosters, take payments, translate for people in Spanish since it's my first language, and things of that nature. Now, because I like photography, and my pictures are pretty decent, my dad pays me extra than my usual salary to take pictures for their website and help them with their logos and color schemes for the game uniforms. Photoshop stuff. Relatively easy. Anyway, I walked in one Thursday afternoon, and after completing some paperwork and finalizing some payments, I went out of the staff room to take pictures of the class in action. Today was a class of eight and 9th graders. I had my uniform on, but because it was a bit chilly inside, I didn't bother taking my jacket off. I thought that as long as I kept it unzipped so people could see the logo on the shirt, I would be fine. And that was a mistake. I stood off to the side of the court, set my camera shutter speed, checked to make sure the flash was off, and started snapping pictures. It was at this point where one of the girl's fathers came in to pick up his daughter. I should mention that normally, this girl's mother picks her up, so he didn't know the staff very well. There was still 5-10 to minutes left of class, so he made his way over to the rows of chairs lining the walls of the gym. Until he saw me, a punk high schooler, taking pictures of his poor freshman daughter and her classmates that I can use for my own enjoyment in the privacy of my bedroom. He immediately got up from his seat and stormed up to me. He demanded to know what I was doing taking pictures of his daughter and threatened to destroy my camera if I didn't give him my SD card that second. I was so shocked at the sudden confrontation that I couldn't think of anything to say, so I simply grabbed the side of my jacket and opened it up a little so the logo on my shirt became visible. The look on his face when he saw the staff uniform was one of absolute horror and shame. He mumbled a half ass apology and walked back to the seating area. Now every time he walks in, he never speaks to me. Even when the bill for the classes is due to be paid, he either waits until he's sure that I'm not around or he gets his wife to do it. He's actually a nice guy from what my dad tells me, he's just really ashamed. That's just an overprotective father doing his thing. But at the same time, OP was standing on the side of the court taking pictures. I would have been okay with that. I would have assumed he was a photographer snapping photos of the team. If he was sitting on the bleachers way, way in the back row in a corner with a camera like that, then that's a different story. That's where it's a cause for concern. At least, that's what I think. They should just pick up team jackets. This story is titled, Shabbily Dressed Guy Actually Does Work in the Building, Dude. So years ago, I got a pretty sweet gig working as a security guard, shift supervisor actually, in a building downtown. It was a mixed building, so we had a food court, retail stores on two levels, as well as five office towers. When I first started, one of the things that all guards are taught is to treat everybody they deal with respectfully. The building did have a lot of transients and homeless people wander through, but we prided ourselves on being courteous and polite to everyone. Well, one lazy Sunday morning, I get a frantic call from our building operator who watches all the security cameras telling me that I need to go to a specific bank of chairs on the second floor. He's panicking and I don't know what he's saying other than one of my guards names. I go rushing over 
worried that this guard, who's a bit of a loudmouth bully, might be in a fight or something. Oh boy, do I wish that was the case. When I get there, the guard is berating an older gentleman who is seated in one of the chairs. The guy has a pile of papers and a coffee on the table in front of him and is pretty shabbily dressed. A pair of jeans, dirty running shoes, a faded and stretched out t-shirt, and a leather jacket that has more scuffs than leather at this point. There is a ratty laptop bag on the floor, leaning against the table. The guard is damn near purple in the face, screaming at this guy to get out, and pointing wildly and yelling obscenities about how we don't allow pieces of garbage to be in here. I walk up, tell the guard to cool his heels, and say, hey, guard, let's all just take a breath. What's going on here? And then I greet the gentleman in the chair and ask what seems to be the problem. The second gentleman gets two words out, and the guard lights up on a tangent about how this homeless drug addict is loitering and needs to leave but won't get up. I shush him and try talking to the gentleman again, and this time, he got four words out before the guard interrupts again, and this time starts threatening to literally flip a chair forward to toss the gentleman onto the floor. I finally have enough with the guard and tell him to go to the office and cool off, and that I'll deal with the gentleman. The guard begrudgingly leaves, and I apologize to the gentleman about the guard's overreaction. The gentleman basically says, I appreciate it. I work over in X Tower on X floor, and forgot my keys. I was waiting for my assistant to arrive, and can let me in. I automatically offer to let the gentleman into his office. We do it all the time, and have specific protocols for it and he accepts. So away we go to the elevator. So away we go to the elevator. We reach his floor, and the doors open, which is when I realize where I am. Every single night, we patrol every single office space of every single tower, except for one. On one floor, the entire space is occupied by a legal firm that's worth multi-millions, and we aren't allowed in the office, ever. And yep, I'm standing on that floor. The gentleman steps into the floor lobby, and I have to excuse myself to go get the keys for his office, since we aren't allowed to carry a copy of it so I can let him in, and he just nods. I race down to the building operations room, snag the key, and race back as fast as I can. When I get back on the floor, I open the office door, and the gentleman invites me in as he goes to shut off the alarm. I then have to awkwardly ask him for his ID, and to see his office so I can verify that he's allowed to be there. He chuckles and obliges me. He then tells me that he's the freaking owner of the legal firm. He thanks me for letting him in, and I leave. About 20 minutes later, the president of our security company arrives on site, with two other people, and the guard who blew a gasket is escorted off site. He's fired. As soon as I left, the lawyer called the manager of the building, and the manager then called the security company, who came down personally. I got a nice compliment for how I handled things, and I learned why we had the rule of treating everybody with respect. Guys, this is why you don't judge people solely on appearance. A lot of wealthy people are really, really low-key, and it's pretty easy to make yourself look rich by swiping a credit card. It's also amazing that the owner of the law firm kept his cool while being yelled at. But then again, how can you be bothered by little stuff like that when you know who you are and you own a multi-million dollar law firm? This story is titled, Entitled Karen Gets Hurt Because She Doesn't Listen. Okay, so I'm going back to work because it's finally opening back up after the virus, and that made me remember this story. Some of the moments of this are a little fuzzy, as I was running on three hours of sleep that day. I work at a popular thrift store in Canada. When I was on mat leave with my little one, I had to go into my store to buy some more baby clothing, as he was getting way too big for his younger clothing. I was browsing some of the household aisles, when I hear a smash at the other end. I looked at my watch, and realized that most of the employees who would deal with this problem were on lunch. So the policy is if something glass breaks, one employee would stand at the break point to stop customers from stepping on it, and another would go get a broom to clean up the mess. As no one was around, I decided, what the hey, I'm not in a hurry, and the baby's still sleeping in the cart. So I stood there, and my mother-in-law went to tell the cash about the break. 
Most customers were regulars who knew I worked there and just had a baby. Some of them even stood there out of the glass to gush about how cute my little man is. Then there's this one lady who looked like a freaking Karen comes near, and I say, Excuse me, ma'am, I'll have to ask you to go down to the other aisle and come back once this mess is cleaned up. She scoffed at me, looking me up and down and said, You're not the boss of me. Why are you telling me what to do? You don't even work here. And started walking on the glass. To be fair, the clothing policy at the time was all black, and I was wearing bright colors and a long flowing skirt. So I calmly said to the lady, Ma'am, please stop walking, this glass could hurt you. And yes, I do work here, I'm just on leave with a baby. She says, What glass? There's nothing on this floor. She said that as she stopped to look on the shelves. She never even looked down. I was 23 at this point, 24 now, and she went to walk away and at that moment, this lady frickin' slipped on the glass. I asked her if she was okay and she screamed, Why didn't you warn me there was glass? I'll have you fired! I did warn you. I said that as a supervisor and my mother-in-law showed up. The supervisor was the only one available to clean up the mess, and she's one of the best ones there. Luckily, the lady only got a small scratch on her hand from the glass, and she said, I want her fired. Where is her manager? Oh, so now she believes me. As I explained to her what happened, the lady kept trying to butt in, but the supervisor kept holding up one finger to silence her. Another customer chimed in and said that I was telling the truth, and I did warn her about the glass. The lady glares at me and says, She's lying. She wanted me to get hurt. That's why she didn't tell me about the glass. I need to note that the glass was bright green. You can't even miss it like you could clear glass. The supervisor sent me off, and she dealt with the situation, and told me that I could go to the break room to hang out with the other employees. So from there I thanked her, and went to the break room where my co-workers fussed over the baby, and got to take turns holding him, as I rested and told them what happened. I don't know what happened to that lady, but I was given a $20 gift card as a thanks for going above and beyond, and doing my job, even when I was off. It actually paid for most of my items after my discount. This story is titled, I do work here, and you need to go. I work at a place that does nighttime events during the weekends, where we sell beer and have food. It's not a restaurant, it's all outdoor. We are family friendly, and due to the type of licensing we have, we're only allowed to sell beer and no other alcohol. At the time, my job was to walk around to make sure that nobody was sneaking in outside drinks, as we occasionally get secret shoppers making sure that we're following codes. One night while making my rounds, I spotted a group with clear plastic cups and a bottle of wine, which we don't serve. I politely informed them that they need to dump their cups and put the bottle away, and I will not make them leave as long as I don't see it again, to which they responded by saying that the bartender sold them the bottle of wine. I informed them that this would not happen, because if wine were sold, we would cease to be family friendly and not be able to allow children to come in and be a part of our neighborhood events. After I say this, they admit that they brought it, and that they're good friends with the owner, and he said it was okay to do so, and they've done it before, and that I can ask any worker that was around that they're allowed. I kind of realized that they thought I was just another patron, because I don't have any other uniforms or tags. So I tell them that I'm an employee, and have been given the authority to kick people out who aren't compliant with our rules, and hand out a ban to them as well and that I was going to get their friend, the owner, to explain further if they misunderstood. This made me annoyed because they tried to get away with it and possibly get us shut down, so I dropped the leniency and asked them to leave. The next day, I was on shift in the morning for my normal duties, when one of the group members arrives. He sees me working and rudely asks for the manager, and tells me that he's going to get his ban lifted. So I am the manager, but of a different section of the business, but I still have some authority over these matters, and I tell him so. He drops his smirk, and says he'd like to talk to the owner. So I suggested he call them since they're such good friends. He stormed off in a huff, and has not returned since. And that's a wrap for this episode of r slash I do work here lady. If you missed the last episode, OP is a landscaper, and has the cops called on him for digging in a backyard. Thanks for hanging out with me today and listening to the stories. 